So the first item is to do the continuation of the um, uh, hearing for St. John Cantius, right? Correct, yep. Okay, I actually, I don't have the, the lot number in front of me, um, but I, I'll, I'll open the meeting to continue the hearing if you want to put the, say the lot number. Yep. Uh, um, <clears throat> hang on just a second. I had that up and then I, um, it's 32A 171. Okay. And um, I understand we've had a request from the applicant to continue the hearing again. And um, uh, so I guess I'd like to, and first, is there any discussion from any members of the public? I don't on this kind of issue? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I could explain a little bit, I think, in terms of the length of the continuation about that, because you don't want to take public comment if you're going to continue the hearing because the applicant oh, okay. isn't here. Right. Um, so the, um, the applicant requested to con uh, for one more continuation, they actually have applied to the um, CPC for um, assistance in funding for the preservation of the building. They're going to be uh, presenting to the Community Preservation Committee tomorrow, um, but Community Preservation Committee won't be making recommendations till April, and then it goes to City Council that who ultimately votes to approve any funding. Um, so my recommendation would be, um, because council process is going, could take a while, we don't know, it's a brand new council, lots of members have never participated in any of these kind of public um, discussions about funding, so it might take a little bit longer than other projects um, under previous councils, so mm -hmm. my recommendation would be June 7th, because that would give time for council to have at least a couple of meetings to discuss the item and then the mm -hmm. applicant would know more clearly what the path would be um, so that would be my recommendations that june 7th is the first tuesday of june and um so you might want to put it first up at 6 30. okay w could i hear a motion to that effect i'll make a motion to have the continuation to June 6th, June 7th at 6.30. Is there a second? I'll second it, Bob Walker. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Bob Walker. Aye, Bob, Joe Blumenthal in favor, yep. So the okay. motion carries. Okay, great. And now we, and now Alan takes over, right? To, for the rest of the, uh, no, mm -hmm. you're going to be it. You're oh, going to chair the entire meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gee. Yeah. Because she has to, to recuse. To she couldn't participate in the next one because um, her firm is representing oh, okay. the church. Okay. So once again, I'm going to ask you to. Um, I guess I. I have to ask if there's any public comment for anything that's not on the agenda. So if there is, please speak up. Not hearing anything, uh, we'll open the meeting for the um, uh, the church on King Street. And if Carolyn, I, I, again, I don't have I'm not I, I don't have the hey, there I am. agenda in front of me. Hey, okay. look who's here. Um, so that's for 101 King Street, uh, map ID 31B 151. It was uh, advertised in the Gazette. Um, on February 15th and February um, 22nd um, for 6.30 p.m. And it was it's a, review, a request for review of uh, removal of an architectural element from the roof of the church at 101 King Street. So uh, the next thing then will be for the, um, ap the applicant to present uh, the proposal to us. So if you could introduce yourself and uh, unmute yourself or whatever. 
Good evening. Uh, I'm Jonathan Salvon with Kinrell Architects. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Great. I think we also have um, someone uh, from the parish, and I'm going to guess it might be uh, Father Michael, but it might be one of the uh, parishioners who, who's been working with this. I don't know if they want to introduce themselves at the beginning here or not, but I can see uh, St. Elizabeth Seton Hall. Yes, we're in a room. It's uh, Father Michael, um, Mark D. Pace, um, Harry Petrucci, and Ed Skrowski. We're all in the same room. Great. Um, so I will I will begin our presentation, um, and uh, and you know feel free to, to ask questions as we go along. Um, but uh, Kuhn Riddle has been uh, uh, hired by uh, the parish to. Uh, do a uh, study um, that we're, we've mostly wrapped up on their sort of second phase of, of work at the uh, King Street site. Um, there was a previous phase we weren't involved with uh, that that uh, made site improvements. Um, now they're beginning to focus on the, the building envelope, the exterior of the building. Um, and we have uh, done a study to explore the, the various costs and, and work associated with, with that. Um, uh, as a partial outcome of that study, um, one of the things that was was explored was uh, how to um, how to address the needs on the the current steeple um, or bell tower. Uh, it it needs a fair bit of work. Um, it doesn't actually contain a bell. I should probably note. Um, and the, the the parish is considering not uh, instead of. Um, repairing it, removing it. So that, that is why we're basically here tonight, is to, to talk through um, the, the proposal to remove the bell tower. Um, to repair the bell tower uh, will cost approximately $180,000. Um, another option that could be explored would be to replace the bell tower. Uh, that would be closer to $250,000. Um, it is a, a wooden structure uh, that is original to the, uh, the church from a I think it was about 1915 or so. Um, and uh, like much of the rest of the church, it does need repair. Um, uh, setting aside just for a second, the bell tower, the, the other things that we've been exploring just so that everyone kind of has the broader scope of the, of the work is um, replacing the roof. The roof needs replacement. The gutters need repair and or replacement. Uh, there's a fair amount of um, uh, just general brick pointing that needs to be done. Um, and then for anyone who's kind of walked along King Street, you've probably noticed that on the front facade, the west facade, uh, there is, uh, there's some lovely terracotta columns um, that are severely weathered. The glazing has begun to crack off. So we're gonna be uh, hopefully replacing that as part of this larger project, uh, replacing them in kind so that they will look as they do today. Um, and then there's also going to be work uh, to, you um, uh, restore the stained glass windows um, and put new plexi, uh, I don't know, excuse me, take off the plexiglass panels that are there now, restore the windows, restore the woodwork and put new um, uh, tempered glass protective uh, coverings over the, the stained glass. Um, so I, I'm gonna move down to some images, um, but as I'm doing that, oh, I, you can't see what I'm putting, I've got on my screen yet. I would like to share that if that's all right. I don't know if someone needs to do that first allow me to, but I'm going to try. Let's see here. This should be the right one. Do folks, what do folks see? You see, uh, the, the, you see the, the title? We can page see here? the proposal Great. on the page, yes. Great. So I'm just going to scroll down in this. Bear with me for a moment. Um, uh, this is an excerpt from the, the, the structural report that our structural engineer um, uh, Gibble Norton Champion Brown out of uh, Connecticut did. Um, that's where this image came from. Um, it, as I said earlier, it is a wood frame tower. If I didn't say that already, I should probably say um, with, uh, you know, it's built in several layers uh, with uh, various kinds of roofing uh, at, the, at, the, at the different joints. This is a view inside. Uh, this is the main roof of the sanctuary. This is kind of the, the supporting framing. Here we've moved up a level uh, to kind of a, the, the first tier. And this shows some of the, the um, plastic and, and 
attempts at waterproofing to keep uh, the current leaks from uh, leaking into the um, into the sanctuary. But you can also see if there are some, if you can see my mouse, there's some substantial holes that, that need to be fixed. Uh, again, some views of the, the water damage uh, framing. Some framing that will need to be uh, stretched addressed structurally. Uh, this is uh, another view of the supporting structure. And then moving to some outside views and sort of a before and after. Um, obviously here on the left, you can, you can see the existing uh, bell tower um, with its several layers. You can see that it's in, while it's in need of paint, it actually is in need of uh, more deep repair uh, there's a lot of uh, trim that's either missing or, or um, in the process of kind of rotting away. And then on the right is the uh, proposed alteration, uh, which would be to remove the, the bell tower in its entirety and, and extend the roofing over the area where it was. And again, a view sort of directly, uh, looking directly east uh, from King Street, uh, the current bell tower and then the facade with the bell tower removed. And again, just to, to touch on some of the other work that we are, or that the parish would be doing um, is the project moves from a study phase into a construction phase as uh, to repair um, the terracotta um, that's, that is up high, repoint the brickwork in various areas along the sides of the building as well. Um, and then for the, the columns that are very heavily weathered, have lost a lot of uh, their, uh, the glazing to the ter terracotta to replace those with a cast stone, custom cast stone that would capture, you know, the detail and character um, of the existing columns. And this is just an, an example of one of the companies out there that will re replicate that sort of terracotta detail, but in a different material, uh, which is a cast stone um, they use molds to, uh, you know, can take an original um, item, make a custom mold, and then replicate uh, those forms. And I, th I don't think I necessarily need to page through our full study drawings. I will if people want, um, or I can pause at this point and you can, you can ask questions. Uh, yeah, Jonathan. Um, I appreciate you telling us how old the building is, and I actually think, am I, can I go ahead, Joe? Uh, yeah, so we could, uh, right now we'll have members asking questions, and then I'll open it up for the public to ask questions. Um, and I was just wondering, um, actually, not to Jonathan, but to, um, Carolyn, has there been any responses from the public by any chance? Uh, there have been no comments that have come in um, since this was advertised and sent out. So, um, no. Um, and I'm also just wondering how the parishioners feel about it. And uh, I, I think it looks fantastic without it. Um, I know it's classified as historic building if it's 75 years old. Um, which obviously it is, but um, yeah, I think the improve without it, it looks like it looks great. But um, what does anybody else think? This is Mark DePace from the parish. I can tell you that uh, we distributed flyers within the church for parishioners. We uh, established an email box for any parishioners to make any comments. Uh, we received only positive comments saying that uh, it would be, it looks nice without the bell tower, especially since the, there was never a bell in there, even though that was the intent. And it was not, um, so anyway, they're, they're saying it's probably good to have it not uh, there. So we got positive comments about the removal of the architectural element. Great. What's, what's the roofing material now on the roof that has to be replaced? It's, it's an asphalt shingle. At some point in time, I'm sure it was slate because there are some little 
um, lower roofs uh, towards the east end of the building that have a little bit of slate on them. Um, but the current main roof is is asphalt and it's proposed to be replaced in asphalt. Do are there any other members here that have, have questions and want to ask about anything? I'm also curious, does the church have any requirements that a crucifix has to be showing on the building? Um, if you notice that even if you remove the bell tower at the ridge in the front of the church, there is a built in cross. It's pretty much obscured um, because the bell tower just overshadows it, but there is a, a cross there, not a crucifix, but a cross. Oh. And I, I don't know, Father, you can speak whether or not we absolutely have to have a cross there, but irrespective, there is a cross there. You can see that in that picture. I, I thought that was a, oh, that is a cross? I, it's hard to yeah. read. I thought it was a figure or a, a human figure, but I guess not. No. So, that's, oh, that's, that's a cross. Blurry, okay. But, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I see it. Okay. Cool. And Mark's correct. When you look at it, you know, straight on in this left-hand picture, it, 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 it disappears into the background. Um, Carolyn. Uh, obviously the terracotta is going to be replaced. And if we wanted to see um, samples, how do we do that with the Zoom committee or Zoom meetings now? Um, well, there are two things. One is they show the process um, cast in stone. The other thing is you don't, I mean, you're not the historical commission that um, would require um, potentially um, review of other, uh, you know, more historic, you know, evaluating the historical accuracy of it per se. Um, you, any change to the appearance of an element from the, from the street would require approval. It, from the description, they are stating that they're replacing or repairing or restoring to its um, to maintain the appearance. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you would be evaluating. Um, but no, I mean, <clears throat> otherwise, if uh, I think you often ask for samples, obviously, but it's you can't do that right now. <laughs> Next month. <laughs> I'm having. Um, Go ahead, John. Uh, Carolyn, I, this the historical commission does not get to weigh in on this because it's central business. No. Is that correct? That's it's, correct, and and there's no demolition, so there's nothing there's nothing in their jurisdiction at all. It's just central mm -hmm. business architecture. Right. But I'm just saying, as a comparison, you know, if there were a building within, say, the Elm Street district where that the analysis of the exact material might be a little bit more um, critical. Yeah, I'm having kind of like an ideological issue with this because the Central Business Architecture Committee, I guess is not really an historic preservation commission or right. committee at all. Um, I, if there was one, I'm sure they would be opposed to removing that cupola structure. Um, I don't feel like it's our responsibility to help out the church in terms of expenses, since this would be less expensive to remove it than to restore it. Um, but it is part of the historic context of our town, of our city, and. I have very mixed feelings on taking it off versus restoring it. Um, I just have a hard time dealing with that. Uh, I Internally, I feel like it should be repaired and left as part of the original structure. The flip side is I understand economy and those issues. Um, I'm kind of on, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle right now, you know. <clears throat> Are there any other members of the commission here other than the three of us or? Uh... It's just us. 
Just us, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, I'd like to um, say I I find it I find it upsetting the idea of removing the one of the really defining features of this building on King Street. I mean, we're we're concerned with the um, a, appearance of. Uh, properties in the central business district and one of the most important things is that these these properties have uh, um, architectural features that make them seem distinctive and and to remove that from this building makes it a lot less distinctive um, so I'm uh, 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 I think that has I think that fact has to be considered in our um, thought process for this. Um, but if if um, if nobody else on the committee has anything to say or has any other questions, um, I'd like to open it up to members of the public to make comments. Is there anybody out there that wants to say anything? I know there's somebody out there that wants Barbara to say Barbara has her hand raised. Well, well, can I? I didn't know if I could just unmute myself. So you can. I can. Okay, well, I've unmuted oh. myself. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so I. Um, it's First, you need to, to identify I, yourself. Identify I'm yourself. I'm Barbara Blumenthal, and I live in Northampton. Do I? You need my street address? Does no, Carolyn need I my street just, address? This, did you live in Northampton? Chapel Street, okay, Northampton. And it occurred to me as I was listening to what's been going on so far that ironically, at one point, this building and the lot was under the purview of the historical, the Northampton Historical Commission on which I serve because, and I apologize, I didn't look up how many years ago this was, but we did um, impose a demolition delay on the building that was next to this. It's part of the church, it was the parish house, which is was quite an historic um, building in Northampton, and unfortunately, the you know the year ran out, and that um, building was demolished. It's as you as you're looking at this facade, it's it was to the left of it, and at the moment, there's parking lot there, and the uh, uh, diocese and the parish said it was their intention to build a um, their community center there, because they chose this church among the, all the churches in Northampton the Catholic churches to be the one they were going to preserve and use, but they needed more space and they needed a bigger hall. That hasn't happened. Uh, you know, it, um, in some ways it's pointless. I don't really even care if it ever happens. The, the historical building is, is gone. But um, I do want to say that um, it's... Um, Again, I think you know Bob uh, having his mixed feelings, and Joe saying he feels that this is a part of this building, and the uh, Mr. Salvin of Coon Riddle said this is part of the. It's an original part of the building, and it's irrelevant whether or not it ever had a bell in it, because there are lots of churches and who, that have quote unquote bell towers that never had a bell. Um, but I think it's just totally unacceptable and just horrifying to me that a this original uh, tower might be removed. Um, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you. There's no one else present from the church that would like to make any comments. You took the words right out of my mouth, Bob. I just see if anyone's out there, you know. Um, obviously, if there's no other comments, we should put together a motion and make a decision. Apologize for the delay, but we're discussing it internally in this room. And we would like to comment about Barbara's comment is that we're still trying to proceed along the whole master plan that would include the uh, community center on the left. And, um, you know, I, I think that it would all fit in very nicely as soon as we get that done. It's just that because of uh, monetary reasons and many other reasons that it's um, proceeding at a pace that is 
a lot slower than we ever anticipated. Uh, the overall plan that was put into place many years ago is still in play. This is the this is the second step in at least a three-step process. Is that not correct, Mark? Yes. As a matter of fact, it originally was conceived of as three steps, but I think it's going to because of the magnitude of the work, it's probably going to be put into five phases, um, and this is basically phase two. You know, I have some mixed feelings because you're kind of asking our committee to help you out for budgetary reasons, but the reason <clears throat> the church is in this condition is because of deferred maintenance and lack of care of the of the diocese. And I don't feel like the financial issues should come into accounting here. I think the church should be maintained as the structure that it was. That's my opinion. Is there anybody else that has, um, that wants to weigh in on this? I'm just curious, um, who was the original owner? Was it always the diocese? Yes, I believe that's correct. Obviously the property existed before the diocese owned it, but the structure has been owned by the diocese. And I, I apologize, this is Barbara again, but I, I realized I didn't clarify, you know, I said that I was a member of the Northampton Historical Commission when I made my comments, but I want to clarify that I'm not speaking for the commission or even as a commissioner, I was, my comments were as a, a, pro, a citizen of Northampton. Um, if nobody else has comments, is it, Carolyn, is it now appropriate to close the meeting and-, and uh, um, Sure, if you're ready, you can make a motion to close. Mm -hmm. Would somebody like to make a motion to close the public meeting? I'll make, I'll make a motion. motion. We're all second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Bob Walker. Listen. Okay. Um, does do we want to talk about this anymore or does one of you two want to make a motion <clears throat> well if there's no comments i'm going to make a motion that we um i might have a trouble wording this um i think we're reviewing two issues here one is the columns and the terracotta replacements uh, I make a motion that we allow the replacement of the front columns and terracotta piers with cast stone, but that we will not allow the removal of the cupola structure. Is there Marissa, a do you want a second? Uh, I second the motion. Well, um, and uh, let's vote. Bob, you want to vote? Yeah, I vote in favor of the motion. I just Matt and Melissa. Uh, I vote uh, nay. And I vote uh, in favor of the motion. Okay. So that means the motion passes two to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Carolyn, do we have any other business? Um, I did not get the minutes to you, so no, we don't have that. Um, and I don't know yet about a project for um, April, if you have an April meeting. <clears throat> so no, I do not have anything else. <laughs> In that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> Why, Andrew? No, you you make the motion. So I can't make motions because I'm chairing the meeting. So I'll make a motion to, make to a motion. adjourn the meeting. I second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I think we need a larger committee. 